guys, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Gabby. I'm a fashion, beauty, and still life photographer based in London. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create these super glowy, dreamy images with star filters on your camera. You know the so today I'm going to do a beauty shoot with the images and show you guys the before and afters and um, with the filter and without the filter. And you can see the effect that it has on your images. So let me just show you guys. Here are the filters that I bought. You do have to be careful because you have to buy the filter that matches um, the opening size of your lens. So what I, I made a mistake here. I bought non-variable filters. So your star filters have to be star filters that are variable. What this means is that it has this, um, this little handle on the end which you can turn and your stars will turn so the images so your stars aren't all in the same area um, so I ended up buying this is an old star filter I have for my 50 millimeter lens but these are the new star filters that I bought for my hundred but they're not variable so they're not gonna work so what I've done for this shoot it's a little MacGyver but I've just taped my 50 millimeter star filter on the end of my 100 macro lens because you need a 100 macro lens to shoot like really good beauty photography. And um, I've taken a couple test shot images so I know it's gonna work, um, but in future, make sure that you order your variable star filters. If you're looking to order some filters for your camera, look on the end of your lens because it's going to be different for each lens that you use. You'll have to have a different set of star filters unless they're the same size. So this number here, um, most all lenses will have that number. Um, this says it's a 100 millimeter lens and then this is the opening size of the end of your lens. So this is the size of the star filter that you need to get for your lens. And don't forget, it has to be a variable star filter. Now on some lenses, this number can be a little bit more tricky to find. So this is my 85 millimeter lens, you can see right there. But if I rotate the lens, I don't see the number opening um, on the top here like it is on my 100. So a good way to check is you can oftentimes find it on the inside of your camera cap. So this is gonna be 58. That would be the size of the star filter that I needed to get for my 85 millimeter lens. Now you can see when it starts to go into the light that the star filter has these etches. So this is basically little lines etched in the glass and that is what creates the stars in your images. So it sort of diffracts the light um, to create stars. Now they'll all be different depending on the points that you get. So generally you get an option of a four, six, or eight point star filter. And that'll be the amount of points that, um, that shows up. And uh, generally it shows up best when you're working with one direct light source or in a very low lit, um, low lit setting. So this is actually another type of star filter for another lens that I have. Now this one is also variable, so it doesn't actually have the handle like the 50 millimeter one does, but it does rotate. So it has two pieces of glass basically, and you can kind of hear it, um, but it does rotate. So if you see the star, let's see if we can find it, okay. So you can kind of see the pattern there in the glass, and if you rotate, that changes. So as you change that over your lens, that is what will change the direction your star is going in your image. This is our setup. So for beauty, we're going to be having the one main key light here. And just to give it a little bit more vintage feel, we're going to do a hair light and have it on this yellow background. Um, here's Alana. Hi! And Rebecca. Makeup. <laughs> And we always have for beauty, I always usually have a um, nice reflector, either a gold or a silver, but to give this one a little bit more vintage feel, we're gonna be doing um, the gold reflector just to give that pop of color back in there. And of course we have the star filter on here so you guys can see what that looks like. Lucky, 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 I want the door hit when I you were nice but now i am telling you i'm going 
to smile But I would never, ever, ever Would have believed them No reason Sometimes the truth is hard to see But nothing never, ever, ever Seemed to be over I saw her So I'm happy I got freed Lucky, lucky, lucky me Okay, so now I'm gonna show you all the photos so that you can compare them. I'm gonna show you with the star filter, without the star filter, and then my final retouched image as well. Lucky, 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 I won't let the door hit when I leave. I guess that I was born beneath a very lucky star. And in a week or two, I won't remember who you are. Madame, he ran out of luck and now he. Now that you've had a chance to see what the images look like with and without the star filter, I'm going to show you the rest of my final retouched images from this shoot. I shot all of these images with the star filter on the end of the lens, um, but some of them have stars and some of them don't. Now I'm going to explain why this is in a bit. tips that I think you should know when shooting with a star filter. It's always good to shoot in a low lit situation. A lot of people use star filters when they're shooting outside, when they're shooting lights um, in, at nighttime. So they're shooting lights in the city or uh, traffic lights, things like that. That's what a lot of people use star filters for. So in that case you would be shooting in a low lit situation and your stars will really show through bright. If you're not in this situation, another thing you can do is shoot with one main key light. This will really help um, bounce your light, either have that key light in the photo directly or be bouncing it off of something that is shiny. Which brings me to the explanation of the stars. If you're not photographing the light directly, you have to use shiny things to bounce the light off. So it basically creates another light towards your camera lens. You want that light to be flashing towards your camera lens. And you can create this by using really shiny objects like jewelry, uh, glittery makeup, reflective clothing, metallic surfaces. Um, for this shoot, it was a beauty shoot, and so we chose to use glitter. But not all of the glitter was super, super reflective. So that's when you see the case when you have some stars and you don't have some stars. The ones that really reflected the light best had the stars. The ones that were more translucent, that type of thing, some of them didn't have any stars at all. Another tip is you really want to be moving around your variable star filter. This is key in not having your stars be in an awkward place, like going through someone's eye or going through a key piece of the frame. Also, a lot of people get confused when they use a star filter. They always think that they should be able to see the star when they look through the lens. If you're shooting in a low light situation, this is the case. You should be able to see the stars. But in my case, I was shooting a beauty session, so you couldn't always see the star before you took the shot. This was because it was a higher light situation. As you can see in the behind the scenes, there's window light, there's all sorts of light happening, so you couldn't always see the star before you took the shot. In this case, it's always a good idea to tether to a computer because then you can see it immediately after you take the shot and you can adjust when needed. One quick editing tip when using a star filter is really bump up your contrast because the star filter itself takes down the overall contrast of the image and can sometimes also make it a bit blurry. So you want to really bump that contrast to bring out the life of the star. A lot of people don't know but you can actually also shoot video with a star filter. So I did a short beauty video as well so I'm going to show that to you guys next but just so you have the information it's the exact same setup. I used the same camera, the same star filter, the same everything. The only thing that I didn't do was um, change the variable which you can do if you 
want that, but then your stars would be constantly moving as you're recording your video. So basically for this video, I use the same star filter on my Canon 5D Mark III and um, a 100 uh, millimeter macro lens.